In 2016, whispers around the states of America was going about the new election, because now the time of the chapter master, Barack Obama, was running to its end. And such, a new chapter master would have to be elected among the masses. And so the election began, and with its end came a new chapter master, and that chosen chapter master was Donaldius Trump. There was a large outcry about this, but there was also those that heralded his rising and ascension to chapter master as something far more. They thought him to be the emperor of mankind. But even though it was a meme, a lot of people thought of it as more than just a meme. And these people were extraordinarily angry, for they did not see this as a meme. They saw this as a heretical outcry. They saw this as their call to action. And as such, they did the unthinkable. They separated themselves from the main chapter to form their own organization with their own insignia and belief. And it was an organization that was extremely trigger happy, very, very sensitive, and had words for almost everything that they considered to be blasphemous, heretical, or just in any way, shape, or form wrong. They became the best goddamn tribunal against any fun there had ever been in the entire galaxy. Together they formed three orders. Ordo Phobicus, Ordo Censorus, and Ordo Racisticus. But united, they were the Inquisition. Or as they're now known, the Left. Oh, may there be mercy upon us. Okay, let's drop the 40k lecture for now. For some reason, media has started to become very prominent about them being left-leaning. And for some reason, it appears that there's a lot of restrictions upon what manner of jokes you're allowed to make. And it seems that a fair bit of people is taking this umbrella. And they often seem to be left-leaning as well. Because whenever a joke is made that doesn't favor their rainbow flavor, they become really angry. And this started a new trend, saying that the left simply can't meme. And why is that? The reason why the left can't meme is because it doesn't exist. Let's go back a bit. Eighteen eighteen, the fifth of May, was the date on which Karl Marx was born, a goal driven man who desired nothing less than to never work a day in his life. And in the year eighteen forty four, he met his one true soulmate, Friedrich. Engels. They both shared the same passion of never wanting to labor a day in their life, and as such they did just that, sat and talked shit for the nearest four years, until eventually in the year 1848 they wrote and published the Communist Manifesto, also known as the Worker's Guide to Starvation and the first edition of D&D. This fantasy publication became as renowned as the Bible itself and spread across the world. Whilst being renowned as the forefather and founder of the commune's ideology, he still wanted something worthy of his own name. As such, his work was rebranded as Marxism, trademarked all rights reserved. And even though being the founding father of communism, this wasn't true communism. It would come at a later date. After all, it takes some time to perfect the works of the elders in order to make sure that it comes in accordance with the requirements of the people. After all, and that's what it's all about. And there laid the groundwork for the upcoming communism that would truly be embellished by all workers across the globe and be brought upon them by a true, righteous, communistic leader somewhere at some time. And so, in 1917, the October Revolution happened in Russia. Fireworks and joyous celebrations was all up and coming as the Bolsheviks now took over Russia in the October Revolution. Led by Vladimir Lenin, they managed to overthrow the Tsar Nicholas II that was sitting his time during World War I. And so, it was all coming to a close, and he managed to do the impossible. He grabbed a hold of the government, and alongside with his two drinking buddies, Stalin, Trotsky, and the other communist leaders, they together formed the inner circle to the Communist Party. And with the workers' Bible in hand, he would form the communist nation after the liking and desire of Marx himself. 
And so he created the first communist nation. Oh wait, no, sorry. That was Leninism. But sadly, he eventually died, broken and tired. Someone had to step in to take over the party. And so, out into the limelight eventually stepped a true communist leader that would take hold of the Bolshevik party and lead it to glory and the red world. That man was Stalin. And so the great work began. Stalin set to work and made sure that the nation would be industrialized. He made sure that there was bread on the table of every peasant. He made sure that there was a picture of him in every household and removed the previous one of Jesus Christ. He starved nations for the people. He destroyed families for the people. He destroyed beliefs in freedom, all for the people. And at the cost of 25 million lives, there would be a proper communist utopia. But soon other people in the party started to accuse him of terrible things. They accused him of not being a communist, but a Stalinist. They couldn't have a Stalinist on the table, they needed a communist. And as such, Leon Trotsky was going to be the one to stand up to the podium and take over. There are no crime in history more terrible in intention and execution than the gate However, sadly, he never got to power, for he was accused of conducting Trotskyism, a grave offense towards communism. But eventually, even Stalin had to die, and so he did, of a heart attack. And so he was condemned for not being a true communist. No, now there will be true communism in the nation. Uh, no, sadly, actually, uh, Georgi actually managed to make Malenkovism a thing, so sorry. Not a communist there either, but the guy that would take on after would be a true communist, Nikita Khrushchev. And through hard work and labor, he managed to establish true com- Oh wait, no, sorry, no, 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 it's Khrushchevism. Next. Ah, Leonid Brezhnev. He would come to create true Brezhnevism. But then came a true heir to establish true communism, and this was Yuri Andropovism. Uh, okay. Uh, Constantine Irrelevant uh, Michali Gorbachevism The Soviet Union failed, having never been able to establish true communism. Cuba tried communism, apparently wasn't communism, became Castroism. China got Maoism. North Korea tried communism, didn't work, became Juche. But wait, what about socialism? <laughs> Please, try and not make me laugh. And like that, I think we've come to a very reasonable conclusion. The reason as to why the left can't meme is because of the fact that it already is a meme. The left never existed as a concept of ideological principles. It is always, and always will be, the butt of a joke, an impossible solution, and a goddamn hilarious meme. But due to this painful notion that they know themselves that they can't meme, they aim to take what they can't have. And if they can't have fun, no one shall have fun. And the limitation on your joy shall be ever excruciatingly wonderful for them to enjoy. The left alone can't break my bone, so I shall laugh on their behalf. And here I'll be to laugh at thee when you scream. Don't you oppress me. I think that will be enough. Ha 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 